I like to react to some of the comments about Haruta work and share a couple of new ways of thinking about it, I think. I, I read everyone's comments about Haruta. There was a wide range of ideas about how long, how much class time should be dedicated to Haruta. There was a very strong consistency in terms of the goals of the Haruta work. And to summarize, there's really two ways that Haruta could be work, used in the classes. One is encountering a new text, work with your Chavuta to try to figure out a new text, the text that we're about to learn. Secondly, review a text that we just learned and make sure you're proficient with it. Um, those are two great uses for Chavuta. The goal of Chavuta in, in these uh, ways is to help students get practice in reading the text themselves instead of just listening to a teacher teach, to actually use the tools of reading the text, either the tool of trying to figure out the text for the very first time, or the skill of learning it a little bit better after it's been taught. I think these are both good uses of um, Chavruta's work. I would actually, I think that the first is the most intuitive. I think the second is also super useful. Um, one, a couple of people commented that students need to show accountability, which is often difficult in Chavruta work. I think model number two, has an opportunity for accountability because you can teach the Talmud once, have the students work with the Haruta to make sure they're proficient in reading it and explaining it, and then either quiz them or otherwise hold them accountable for that text that they now have the ability to master because they've been taught it, but they need to practice with their Haruta. I'd like to suggest just two other ways of using Haruta, which I think are um, really useful and different. And in one way, I want to just mention that the two methods that we just mentioned are um, could have been done independently. It could have been in a group of one or three or four. They're not necessarily learning from their chavruta or sharing with their chavruta. They're just learning it on their own, and it's good to do it with a friend rather than yourself. Um, okay, so two other ways. Uh, number three, so aside from encountering a text for the first time, and aside from reviewing a text that we were just introduced to, there's also analysis. In other words, there could be um, um, non-textual work, but analysis work. Um, learning, let's say, a machloket between two opinions of the Gemara or two mefarshim on the Gemara, and having students work with the Chavrutza to determine which opinion they find more compelling and why. Or um, list all of the strengths and weaknesses of each opinion. So the students are working with their chavrutza to do analysis rather than textual work. Um, in this case, the chavrutza, the um, the work with the chavrutza is meant to learn from each other because they might have different opinions. You might ask all the students after you learn a machloket. Who, who agrees with opinion number one, who agrees with opinion number two, and match up someone, let's say, from opinion one and opinion two, and have them discuss the strengths and weaknesses of each um, opinion. So they're doing analysis together, and they're learning from each other in terms of each student has an intuitive view one way or the other, and they're sharing that with each other. Another pitfall for Chavruta is that students often feel that if the Chavruta work is going to be summarized in the full class later, then they don't really need to maximize on the Chavruta time. In fact, they can take a break, hang out with their Chavruta, and whatever they need to know for the test or for the course will be reviewed anyway. So um, I think that's a big challenge that needs to be thought about. And in this model, model number three, they don't necessarily need to share with the class everything that they discussed. It could just be that the students are responsible for the knowledge of the opinions and they should be expected to be able to share an analysis of it and they're meant to learn with their chavruta ways of seeing the strengths or weaknesses of each opinion and they maybe don't have to share it out afterwards. Um, okay, then they might not feel accountable. Maybe they're required to write down the list, but they don't have to give it in or they don't have to share it with the entire class. And the students can learn from this that chavruta means that you can gain from your chavruta, period. Not you can learn what the text means and now uh, read it for the class. You can gain in your understanding by learning from the opinions of your friends, which I think is really what we think about when, 
with Haruta, learning from different people's perspectives. Um, they can learn from each other for five or ten minutes, be responsible to make a list that they'll be, you, the teacher can look at it or collect it, but not, not necessarily shared with the entire class. So model number one is meeting a text for the first time. Model number two is reviewing the text, mastering the text. Model number three is analysis. And uh, model number four, and this relates to the reading that I just assigned, but um, learning meaning from the text. And this is a broader conversation about meaning and whether the text that we're learning can have meaning, but hopefully I think it does in some way. So, I mean, it might be in, a, in the Talmud itself, it might be in an Agadah, it might be in a partial lesson or a, holiday, a pre-holiday lesson, but if there are moments when the goal of the lesson is meaning, when you're learning, let's say, bracho and something about Sfila or something about emuna, so the um, chavruta work could actually be to discuss something like, how can this theme be applied in our life? Or um, what's the obstacles in our daily life to implementing this value that the Gemara or that this commentary presented, what are the obstacles and what are ways that we can overcome that? There too is another completely different use of Chavruta, where the Chavruta is talking about something meaningful and applicable to life, and then sharing it with the Chavruta, again, does not need to be shared with the class, but maybe we can convince students that they have a lot to gain by just sharing and learning with their partner. Um, again, they could be responsible to take notes, to, to write notes that could be um, shared with the teacher or not shared with the teacher. So there could be an accountability, but also a value of learning from each other as students in the class something meaningful, either on an analytical aspect or on the uh, application of life uh, perspective.